Global Morning Crossfire, Morning Crossfire. with SWAT and Femi D Live on 95.1 Nigeria Info. <laughs> people will welcome you officially to Budeshi for this week where we get to open it to fix it thank you for joining us and this is brought to you courtesy of the public private development center PPDC and this morning we will be looking at issues that have to do with data uh, topic of course being using data as a tool for effective monitoring uh, and that's going to be the focus well uh, the team at PPDC actually went to equity sometime this month in February to build and strengthen the capacity of stakeholders on access to information, public procurement, open contracting, data journalism, writing impact stories and project through contract monitoring and they are in the studio to discuss the topic today which we earlier told you that is using data as a tool for effective monitoring. Well with me in the studio are Vashima Tengero who is the tech lead at the PPDC and also we have joining us this morning Charles Mba, who is from Datafy, and together we'll be wading through this topic. Good morning to you, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. All right. So tell us Thank more you. about the nature of the work you did in Ekiti. That's my guess. You will tell us that, right? Oh, okay. Yes. Um, so we've been working with uh, Ekiti State. I've been working in Ekiti for the past couple of months. We've been um, supporting them to implement open contracting um, in the state. Um, and within that uh, space of work, we've um, we've um, built an open contracting portal for them, which um, we carried out different types of uh, researches to make sure that the portal meets user needs. We've um, worked with the states to gather um, data and make and convert it to the OCDS standard. We've also worked with um, the states and various stakeholders to build our capacity. Um, to make sure that you know they are able to make use of um, open contracting itself, and then uh, we've also you know worked with various stakeholders to develop strategy to make sure that the open contracting agenda is sustainable within the state. So that's um, just an abbreviation of what we've been doing with them. But um, for the purpose of what we did um, this month, earlier this month, we went to work with the various stakeholders which is on the government side and then on the citizen side to um, build the capacity of government people to be able to um, um, generate data and upload it on the platform. We also worked with the citizens, uh, citizen stakeholders which was mainly um, civil society and media. Uh, we trained them on how to you know, make use of this portal, make use of data on the portal and then you know make sure that the portal reaches its highest potential. Mm. So so at this point in time, we would like to ask why you have to go all the way to Ekiti. When, <laughs> <laughs> when uh, you are closer to Abuja and uh, maybe Abuja doesn't doesn't have that need or why Ekiti? Then let me just ask. Yeah, it's interesting because um, in fact, Ekiti, <laughs> we're going to Ekiti, we have to travel by road. There's no airport and it's a very, very long journey. But <laughs> um, so yeah, Ekiti, I think one of the key, uh, one of the reasons why we we worked with Ekiti is because of, you know, their co commitment and consistency in wanting to provide open co uh, contracting information to its citizens and then, you know, move to the, um, you know, try to be more transparent and accountable, and accountable with um, their contracting. Um, in fact, Ekiti in 2018 in our open state ranking, ranked uh, I think 19 out of 36 states and then in 2019 they moved to second so that shows you that you know on their own side they've been making commitments to um, trying to be open um, they signed up to the OGP and then um, they also you know reached out to us uh, because of our expertise in implementing open contracting and that they would like to work with us they would like to uh, you know promote an open environment within the states. Um, they would like to be more accountable. Um, like it is one of the states that we, we have also been working with to implement open contracting. So yeah, um, I think that because of the motivation on their own side and then because of our experience and they wanting to, um, and also we wanting to work with them, it was more or less a, a mutual um, um, 
partnership that we saw, you know, we saw the need to work with them and they saw the need to work with us. So mm -hmm. we decided to make sure that it, um, it happened at any cost. All right. So um, over to you now, Charles. Um, why do you think the building of the data capacity for stakeholders in uh, equity was that important? Uh, there, is, there is actually a saying now that um, data is the new oil, mm -hmm. data is the lifeblood of development. Mm -hmm. So to meet one of the objectives of um, OCGS, which is Open Contracting Data Standard, which objective states that it is necessary to empower citizens and stakeholders to be able to use available data to track project, government project, and monitor government projects, which will enable contracting transparency and accountability of the government. So this, uh, this, the empowerment actually empowers stakeholders also in both public and private sectors to be able to track government contracts, to be able to monitor these government contracts, so as to hold the government accountable mm -hmm. and to make whatever process they have in the OCDS stages which includes budgeting, planning, tendering, award and final implementation to be transparent. Indeed. All right, so from the training, what are some of the takeaways uh, for the participants and uh, you know, what are they to improve on going forward? Uh, the two takeaways from the training were one, how to pinpoint red flags in open contracting data. And um, from our interactions with stakeholders, we agree that across the various stages of open contracting data, which includes budgeting, tendering, award, and implementation, that they need to look at key areas of tender, award, and implementation to pinpoint red flags. And the second takeaway is an encouragement to explore the FOI Act, which is the Freedom of Information Act. Mm -hmm. And why it is necessary to explore the Freedom of Information Act is to ensure that as a project monitor, which by virtue, um, you are also a, a data journalist or investigative journalist. You'll be able to pass out, you'll be able to give out information that are accurate, first of all, dependable and verifiable, which are one of the, which are one of the key traits of a journalist. Mm -hmm. So exploring the FOI Act will enable stakeholders to come up with accurate, reliable and verifiable information. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, Vashima, you mentioned the deployment of the Equity State Open contracting portal. So what are some of the benefits of this portal to the citizens of the state and uh, how do you see them using that portal? Yeah, um, I think from what Charles has said, there are a lot of benefits. Uh, in fact, for these various stakeholders of the state, um, for the citizens especially, they would be uh, more informed as to uh, how contracting is being carried out um, within the state. Um, and that would, you know, sort of build um, trust between the citizens and the um, government, which is very, very um, essential. Um, citizens will be able to hold government accountable. They will be able to, um, there will be more transparency in the state. And then um, for other stakeholders, such as the private sector, they will be able to, you know, fairly compete uh, in the contracting space, um, smaller, uh, small and medium uh, enterprises would be able to, you know, um, have chances of, um, you know, engaging in the contracting process because when the when contracting generally is in the closed space, only those who have access to, you know, the contract information and have access to officials who are in charge of this contracting are, are the ones that are, you know, give, get getting contracts. But then when it becomes, you know, accessible by all the citizens, you know, it makes the um, it makes everybody happy, right? Everybody has access to this information. Everybody can make more informed decisions, and that informed decision is also on the government side. They can look at, you know, carry out different sorts of analysis to see, you know, where most of their money is being spent. You know, how is the money being spent, and then um, people can generally just um, just have an idea of, you know, how what direction the, the state is looking, uh, you know, in terms of like development and, you know, whatever sorts of um, engagements that are going within the state. So I think that the most important thing is, is not just for the data to be put out, but once, you know, people are, are able to engage with it, once the citizens are able to engage with it, once the, um, the government people are able to see that, you know, this data that is being put out is very essential, um, they are able to see all these benefits and then that's when, you know, the whole 
you know, package the whole story comes to come alive. Mm, interesting. So, so what what are the prospects of this initiative in other states, you know, of the, the country? Um, so, like I said, um, we've been working with uh, various states. As a matter of fact, um, uh, another state has reached out yesterday that they would like to implement open contracting. Um, we have, I think, more than five states who have currently signed up to um, the open contracting agenda. Some of some of them have um, gone beyond just signing up. Some of them have built, you know, their own portals. They're in the state of, you know, engaging um, stakeholders to be able to use that portal. Um, and then other states who, you know, are left behind are also, you know, in this in the at the stage where they're asking themselves, do I wish I would really want to do this? I wish I would want to. Uh, take this bold step, are we going to go forward with this? But I know for sure that um, from from what we have seen from you know the people who have um, been able to implement this open contract from the states that have been able to implement this open contracting, um, the kind of benefits that are reaping from it, other states are getting jealous and they are definitely going to have more states <laughs> signing up. <laughs> okay, you see we're, we're in an age where much as you know data like you said is new oil Everybody is, um, the, the global trend is, you know, this is where we're headed to. In fact, we're already consumed in it, but you still find a, a bit of reluctance in Nigeria, especially when you go to some states. You find out that people are just so very analog. They don't want to embrace the digital and stuff like that. What were some of your experiences? And basically, are you optimistic about this whole process that you started, you know, with the stakeholders at the state level? Because I know in the federal capital territory, we can say that when you go to a place like Lagos, yeah. But when you go to some states, you'd be shocked at the level, uh, you know, I wish they are so averse to things like that. No, they're just used to searching a certain way of doing things. And uh, that's it. Basically, tell me what your optimism is or your pessimism and basically the way forward and all of that. Well, um, I don't want to believe that the government is not aware of the importance of data. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, they want to, I believe they, they always want to hold back data just to cover their corruption tracks. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm fully, I, 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 believe, I believe that, and they know that it's going to help um, citizens track discrepancies in, uh, in contracting and the execution of projects. Mm -hmm. So uh, I actually feel they are withholding all processes of making this data available. Mm -hmm. Okay, take for instance, looking at the um, Ekiti OCDS data. Um, during the interaction we had at Ekiti, the data was actually incomplete. First of all, as at that time, I don't know as of now, as at that time, the data was incomplete. It didn't have, um, it, 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 it didn't have names of contractors that were awarded various projects. Mm -hmm. So why actually was this thing left out? There is a reason why it was left out. They actually feel they are implementing the OCDS, but they are leaving out vital information. Vital information. Yeah, vital information rather. So, but I am optimistic that the process is going to be positive if all stakeholders put their hand on deck to ensure that not just that there is data available, but there is complete data. Complete data. And then also another way to ensure that this is successful is to reply to FOI requests. Because during our interaction, in as much as there were testimonies of the success of FOI, of FOI, some stakeholders complained of lack of response from NDAs when they make requests for FOIs. So if government can consider, first of all, responding to FOIs, and then making sure that not just setting up an OCDS platform, but making sure that all available information that would require tracking of projects from the budgeting stage, the tendering stage, the award and the implementation. Mm. Mm. But, but I know you guys have been working with states and uh, you've been doing the FOI rankings on a yearly basis and mm. stuff like that. What are some of the things that you've noticed so far, you know, with states embracing this particular process and ensuring that, you know, that the space is more open, the processes are more transparent and the use of data generally? Yeah, so, um, so what what I've seen um, essentially is the fact that you know from uh, engagements in terms of uh, FOI, uh, people are beginning to have more awareness about the FOI. In fact, 
for the different states that I personally have gone, you know, to carry out trainings and um, engagements. I found out that a lot of people are not aware of, you know, things as basic as the FOI, mm. um, you know, act. And then by the time, you know, you we build those people's capacities on, uh, on, on the FOI, how to write FOI letters and whatnot, you see that immediately people start to use it. And then even for, you know, the MDAs or government side where people are not really aware of things like the FOI, you know, because of this constant request, because of this constant demand by um, various stakeholders, people, you know, begin to start putting, uh, you know, um, steps in making sure that this FOI is, is, um, is accessible to people. So a lot of times it's just lack of knowledge, just lack of um, capacity to do that. But once... Um, I know for sure that once this engagement um, continues, once we um, you know, continue to build the capacity of, of, of people, the, mm. the, 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 the behavior around the FOI generally is going to improve. Um, and then not just um, responding to people to say, oh, you know, we are going to make that information available, or, or um, you know, just giving excuses. They're actually going to start putting out this um, information. Sometimes you wouldn't blame this, um, the government people who um, when you request for data and they don't have it, it's because of the culture that was there. Um, sometimes, even before people who are currently, you know, um, at the hands of affairs, because um, because they didn't have that culture of, you know, storing data, making mm -hmm. it in a format mm -hmm. that is easily accessible. When you request for this information, it's usually difficult for them to make it available to you. I remember there was a state where um, where we worked with. Um, I think in the last two years, and then by the time we went to a certain MDA to go and get uh, uh, information from them, they told us that, look, honestly, how we usually do it is when there's something, we take it to one of those um, um, ICT centers outside and then they just type it for us and then we bring exactly. it inside <laughs> and then That's we file ridiculous. it and then in, you know when we try to you know dig further into why this thing was happening mm -hmm. yeah, they told us things like oh we we don't have lights in our uh, we don't have lights in our place we don't have computers you know so it's, it's not necessarily that they don't want to put out this uh, you know data they don't want to re uh, respond to this FOI request it's because you know, the capacity is not there, the infrastructure has not been put in place. Mm. But I believe that um, from that engagement, you know, they began to see the usefulness of, you know, of um, having all these structures put in place. And then, you know, on their own, they started requesting from um, government, you know, to make mm. all these things available to them. So when people, you know, go requesting, sending FOI letters from them, they'll be able to uh, respond to those um, kind of requests. You want to add? Yeah, I want to say something. Okay, speaking to um, MDAs typing this data in um, um, whatever format, yeah. most times they are available data in PDF format. And you can't tell me that um, those data are typed in PDF format. They actually inputted in a particular format before they were transformed to PDF format. Mm. And most times the available formats are, P are either um, do a Word document or Excel. Mm. So what stops you from giving us, even if it's a Word document format of uh, whatever data that you have? And I don't want to believe that it was typed in a Word document. Most times I believe it's typed in Excel. So giving us PDF formats of data, I, I believe there's an ulterior motive to that. Mm. So it's actually essential that why they give out the, the PDF format, they also make available the Excel format. So I don't want to agree with, uh, I, I don't totally agree with Veshima mm -hmm. saying that uh, the data are not available uh, in a format that will require a proper analysis or immediate analysis. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, do, do you guys have a projection? Do you have any projection, you know, with, in terms of, because um, you don't just start training or, you know, engaging stakeholders. There must be something we want to achieve. Tell us about that, Veshima. Um, I think generally it's um, and then also it's at the core of the work that PPDC does you know, and just um, helping the various stakeholders to you know to be more open to be more engaged in um, government you know government's practices and that's that's just it for it uh, for us we try as much as possible to start at the smallest level the um, we start with grassroots engagements and then we um, you know, go to make it bigger. Initially, we started off with working at the federal side. Um, that was also, it, you know, it showed us some sort of success and then we also saw some, uh, um, we also learned some lessons which we have 
been taken down to the states. We've also seen that this is also important, not just to work at the federal level, at the uh, you know the high high level um, state. You need to also you need to also go down to you know the grassroots level and engage people from that side. So I think that um, the prospects generally is looking good. Like I said, for the states that have not signed up, a lot of people have been reaching out to us. Um, that how can they be part of this um, open mm -hmm. contracting? Mm -hmm. How can they be, you know, more accountable to their citizens? Even yeah. though <laughs> um, Charles is not <laughs> optimistic, but you know, from um, you know, from what I've seen uh, on the ground, you know, I think that there's there's progress. But Charles can also speak to um, you know the optimism of data use and um, data availability in general. Um, speaking about the optimism of data use and data availability in general, it's not as if I'm not optimistic of, about um, the success of open contracting data. Mm -hmm. But what I said is all hands need to be on deck. True. Not just yeah. stakeholders who are willing to analyze the data. Yeah. Government, uh, government would also have to trust this these stakeholders with complete data. Sure, sure. Not just half Not information. just half information. Mm -hmm. yeah. Once there is complete data, and like I said earlier, there's a reason why they are withholding uh, uh, making available complete data. You know, but I like this, this process that you started because as much as we cannot deny the fact that that is quite uh, prevalent everywhere, it spreads across. Yeah. When people become more aware, you know, it improves the chances of pressure being mounted on government to do what is right. Yeah. Because when, when you're more aware, you're now in the light. And so nothing is hitting anymore. If yeah. there are half information here and there are questions are asked, questions are raised, and people, uh, you need to, to answer. You know, it gets to the point where the government becomes afraid that, look, if we have anything shady, uh, these people know. And so at some point in time, we'll be pointed out for any um, misgivings. And so, you know, it helps them to sit up. So I think we have to start from somewhere. Yeah, it, can, I, it cannot just happen in yeah, a day. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I totally agree with you. In fact, um, publishing data, making it available is just half of the job. True. You know, the second part comes with, you know, engagement. And then um, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. engagement can only come from people seeing this data being uh, as something that is very useful to yeah. them then they can now start to you know as you know he is a data guy so he can you know clearly see the gaps in the data but for somebody who is not you know as en um, enlightened or you know who doesn't know much about data they will just you know probably overlook some of the things that he is talking about so yeah. i think that um the steps that we are taking there's progress uh, making sure that people are aware oh, making sure that people have the capacity True. and then they on themselves by themselves can begin to ask these questions as to why this and this is not available why is this in this certain format and other things like that all right um we have been talking about using data as a tool for effective monitoring and to ensure that that becomes our reality uh, starting with equity ppdc team went in uh, sometime this month to build and strengthen the capacity of stakeholders on access to information public procurement open contracting data journalism writing impact stories and projects they have been talking with us you know about all that they put in place to ensure that this becomes a reality um uh, I've been talking with Veshima and also Charles, who is from Datafight. I think I got that right. Yeah, right? And then Datafight, and then also Veshima is a tech lead at the PPDC. If you want to contribute to the discussion, well, we'll give you some time to call in. That's if you want to, or you want to ask questions. That would be, um, or this would be the perfect time to do so. Or just leave us a message on WhatsApp on 080999. 30137. All right, so before we go, I would like to hear what your final words would be. Um, let's start with you, Rashima, and then uh, we'll come to you, Charles. Uh, my final words would be um, you know, for those of us who are listening, um, we're not just having this conversation so that we can forget about it in the next five minutes. It's also um, so that we can all start to, uh, for those of us who have heard about it, you know, talk to other people. And then within ourselves and within the capacity that we have, you know, find ways to, um, you know, push this open contracting agenda. Um, not just say that, oh, this thing won't work, but also think about ways that it will work. Um, and, yeah, hopefully, uh, as we continue to talk about it, there will be an improvement. Mm. Charles? Yeah, um, uh, PPDC is doing a very good job mm -hmm. with open 
contrast in data standard, creating um, open contracts in data available in various states. Um, I would like to reach out to um, all states, but most especially those that have not keyed into making their project monitoring data available to explore these opportunities to empower their citizens for transparency and accountability. And also for stakeholders, if you find PPDC within your area, please I would like you to um, take advantage of this opportunity to be empowered on how to track projects. These are your projects. Mm -hmm. These are our projects. It's our money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. our development. Yeah. It's our growth. Indeed. Yeah. Um, you want to leave um, the contacts of PPDC? Just maybe a number so um, for people to reach out to. Yeah? Okay, so you can reach us. Reach out to us on our toll-free line, which is um, 0800 uh, Budeshi, B-U-D-E-S-H-I. You can also contact us um, through our social media platforms on Twitter. We are PP Monitor NG. Uh, we are at PP Monitor NG, and then on um, Instagram, we are at uh, Procurement Monitor. Hmm. All right, that's how Budeshi has been, the size of the package this week. When we get to open it to fix it, um, issues that have to do with open contract, uh, contract open contracting, uh, and, and the likes of them, you know, it's very important that we examine the process and how we can effectively ensure that that is put in motion to, like you said, you know, ensure that we achieve development because most of the times when we just go to sleep and fold our arms, then we don't participate and things can just go anyhow and, and we don't have the right to ask the questions. But thank you PPDC and the partners for all that you've been doing to ensure that the system and process are more open and transparent so that we can achieve a very flawless process in the, process, in, in, in the midst of it all. Uh, Vashima, thank you so much for coming. And Charles Marx from uh, Data5, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, yes, we'll take a break now and then we'll come right back on Morning Crossfire. Stay with us.